We spent a lot of time practicing and rehearsing, troubleshooting, but issues still may arise. We really ask for your patience and compassion as we go through our first run on uh, Zoom. Also, it's important to note that, that we'll, we will be recording, so by participating, Please use the chat function in Zoom. Many of you may, uh, many of you have made additional donations. Um, we thank you for that. Um, we're very grateful. I wanna introduce the retreat team. Over the next five days, you're gonna encounter many people from the retreat team. Some of the names you're gonna, you're, and people are gonna meet is John Henderson, Trevania Henderson, Amba Winkler, Peter Crisal, who is our executive director. These are folks that uh, if you have questions, you're gonna be asking them questions through Zoom, or if you're here on campus, you're just gonna be tapping us on the shoulder. Uh, Trevania and Peter, um, they're working in the background helping run the online portion of this, quite a hefty task. Amba is our yoga leader. John is a meditation leader and what we call our gecko. A gecko is someone who is a constant reminder to keep us in retreat mind through our own behavior. He will also provide warning before each program so we can make sure that we get there in a timely manner. I will serve as an MC and also as a meditation leader. And also you might see at different times during the week our, our facility manager, Helmut Floss, running around in and out of the picture. So there's a lot to go over and I wanna jump right into it. The first thing I wanna say is all the times that I'm giving are in Eastern Standard Time, New York time. I apologize for that ahead. For our on-site students, your day is gonna begin very early at 6.30 a.m. At 6.30 a.m. and 3 p.m., we're gonna have walking meditation right outside in front of the meditation hall. In the morning, you're gonna to wanna to bring a jacket and maybe a hat in the afternoon to keep the sun out of your eyes. But at 6.30, be out there, we'll be in the courtyard. There's no better way to begin the day than walking meditation. Breakfast is at 7 a.m., dinner is at 6 p.m. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about our program for folks that not only are here on site, but are also online students. Rimba Chase teachings will start at 8 a.m. and 7 p.m. If you could be in the meditation hall or online five minutes prior, that would be great because sometimes we'll have updates about uh, changes in times to the, to the program and different adjustments. So how's the teaching gonna work? If you're on Zoom, Rinpoche is gonna be spotlighted or if you're in this hall, Rinpoche will be on the screen. Save questions until he asks. Rinpoche will say, any questions? Sometimes out of nowhere. So don't be shy. Questions are key ask. Please make sure your questions are brief and very direct. So Rinpoche has time to answer as many questions as possible. For our on-site students, we ask that you line up behind pretty much right where I'm standing, only two at a time and keep six feet distance. And once somebody asks a question and leaves, the next person stands up. There's a little dot here you can stand on and then maybe the next person can come up and, and, and wait six feet behind. For online students, at the bottom left-hand corner of, of your Zoom screen, there's gonna be something that says participant. You're gonna to wanna to click on participant. You're gonna find your name 
and you're going to click raise your hand. When you raise your hand, Peter and Trevania will be communicating with you through the chat function. When is gonna be your opportunity to ask a question? When it's your turn, you will be spotlighted and Rinpoche will see you. Pretty cool. Um, if you want Peter or Trevania to ask Rinpoche a question for you, just chat him the question and, and we'll see if we can fit it in with the other questions. So for both people on site and online, the program continues after Rinpoche's teachings and questions. At 9.30 a.m. and at 8.30 p.m. in the evening before each of the guided meditations, we'll have uh, Tibetan yoga. Amba will lead us in that. She's fantastic. It's a very special yoga that Rinpoche has taught us for our daily practice. It helps bring all the aspects of mind and body together. Now, for those of you who are yoga experts, it's, it, it's, it's a great series of exercises to do. For those of you who aren't, don't worry. It's a very calm and light, relaxing yoga. It's very easy to learn, and Amba's a fantastic teacher. Now, every day we're gonna have two guided meditations, one at 10 a.m. and one at 9 p.m. Rinpoche will likely facilitate one of those meditations in the evening, in the 9 p.m., probably in the evening, but that could change if Rinpoche would like it to. So at 10.30 a.m., for both online and on-site, after the morning guided meditations, we're gonna have group breakouts. Now this is really your opportunity to share and, share and discuss what you've learned through the teachings and ask other people questions. Rinpoche has suggested that perhaps participants in each group can construct group questions that they can ask in the next question and answer period with Rinpoche. Those of you on site, on site students, will probably break into one or two groups and we'll go outside and we'll probably sit, sit outside and talk about some of the teachings and share our thoughts. For online students on Zoom, everyone on Zoom, just stay on. Um, you will automatically be moved into breakout groups of 10 people. And those breakout groups will last 30 minutes. Daily at 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. will be time for your personal retreat both calm abiding and analytical meditation. You can practice in your own room, in and around the campus. It's gonna be a beautiful week here, very nice weather, you can practice outside. Or if you're at home on Zoom, in and around your house, your home. The last day of the retreat will be very special. We will have a refuge and mandala offering ceremony. We'll provide more information as we get close to Wednesday, so you know exactly what to do during these events. So what is Retreat Mind? Well, first, timeliness is very important. A retreat can be incredibly intense, so you're gonna to wanna to pace yourself and try to attend all the programs that you can. What does your mind and body go through in a retreat? An awful lot. I compare a retreat to, it's similar to rebooting your computer, right? Back to original factor, factory settings. It's like cleaning your hard drive and it's gonna help you gain focus and clarity. I've been in many Discovering the Dharma retreats and when I've really focused on the retreat, during the retreat, when I've left the retreat, it's like my eyes have been opened and clean. It's, it's incredible. Now, retreats can be difficult. Your mind and body will challenge you. If you are feeling uncomfortable 
impatient, or even have strong emotions, guess what? That's normal. It's okay. What's happening is your mind and body is resisting. It's resisting the focus. It's resisting the digging deep. It's resisting being still, right? Here's the thing. We're all going to be going through the same thing. What's happening is we're slowly letting go. We're slowly letting go of everything that we did this week, this month, this year. And that is truly what retreats are for. They're about taking the time to focus on yourself, to focus on your mind, and start letting go of some of these things that we've just attached ourselves to. Now, many people will find, you'll find yourself maybe settling down after a couple of days. But it is important that in a retreat, you continually try to push through the tough moments and stay disciplined. And your mind and body will start adjusting. A sense of ease and contentment will begin to grow. I, I, it's like the third hump day. Usually by the third day, you can start feeling great. By the fourth day and fifth day, by the fifth day, you wish you could have a sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth day. So, a few tips for the best retreat possible. And I'm serious about this one disengage yourself from the world. Um, no cell, no surfing, no emails, news or video. Hide your smartphone, iPhones, they're the enemy. That's why I always carry around a nice pocket watch and I leave my iPhone in my room. Um, follow the retreat schedule. That goes back to that being disciplined. Try not to miss a meditation or teaching unless you need a break. And sometimes you need a break during a retreat. That's fine. Those who are on site, try to stay on the center grounds unless you need to leave. It could be tempting to go out, but sometimes tempting to go back out into the world will, it's like you're breaking a fast. You, you, it will break the retreat a little bit. So try to keep disciplined in that. The other thing we do in a retreat is we try to keep functional speech. Now, functional speech is, it's almost like a verb. It's almost like you're absorbing yourself into the retreat. You're applying the teeth teachings as you're learning the teachings. You're communicating with intent. But functional speech isn't just being silent or quiet. That's not what functional speech is about. Functional speech is taking the time to share your practice and your experiences with others you are taking the retreat with. Uh, functional speech is also smiling and having a sense of humor. So there's a lot of information that I've given you, and there you probably have a lot more questions. Um, but you can ask your questions through the chat, and we'll try to get back to you. And of course, those of you who are here, just grab one of the uh, folks that I've talked about, some of the retreat leaders, and just ask us. From the entire retreat team, we wish you the best retreat possible, and we're so happy you're going to be here with us this week. We want to thank you. Now, I believe Rinpoche should start teaching in a few moments. So have a great evening, everybody, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the retreat. Um, I will start this talk with a short story. A couple, a couple of decades ago, in an afternoon, there was a child who found himself surrounded by many people. He didn't have a clue 
what they are saying because they are not speaking in his mother tongue language. He was so small that everything and everyone looks uh, seem to be so tall and huge. Slowly, so much of expectations were placed on the child, such as they wanted him to sit for a very long extended period of time, just like a statue. And, uh, <clears throat> and they want him, they want he knows a lot more than other children because they made him study longer than others, others do. The other reasons that they gave was that uh, he didn't have to commute to other place to study. Because teachers come to his place. And uh, they also expected him to give, uh, you know, teachings on meditation when by that time no one has taught him about that subject. So can you imagine what an exceptional experience the child may had or going through? That was me as a child. <clears throat> 